Without All right. further ado, let's hear from Aaron Simpson about uh, assessing the use and impact of free public computer labs in Chicago. Yes. All right. Um, thank you so much for having me today. I'm so excited. I'm here um, also for lunch, but mostly to get your thoughts and your expertise and your help on this, because a lot of what I'm going to present today um, is questions and things that we need to find out and a strategy to get there, but I do need your help to, uh, to make it happen. And so I really, I just really appreciate your time and please interrupt me at any point if you have questions or comments and I'll also ask for those at the end. Um, so my name is Erin and I'm a senior at the University of Chicago and if you want to pull up uh, the PowerPoint, wherever that is. Oh, um, there you go. Okay. Wow. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'm interested in um, urban sociology and place-based social policy making as it relates to digital inequities and physical inequities. Okay, this oh, there you go. Perfect. Okay. Um, and so I am currently in my fourth year at the University of Chicago where I study public policy. And I'm writing my bachelor's thesis paper, this research project, um, about assessing the use and impact of public computer centers. And so, as far as the methodology background, I've worked for a number of research groups that use survey methodology, including the University of Chicago Crime Lab. And from a content perspective, I've been volunteering at the Francis and Mildred Parks YWCA, which is a Connect Chicago location in their public computer lab for the past three years. And so I've gotten to see a lot of that firsthand, and I'm really interested in it on a broader level. Um, I've also started the tech team at the University of Chicago, and so we teach college students uh, digital literacy, web development, uh, data <coughs> analytics, and so I've seen the training perspective too. Um, so outline for today, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the questions I'm hoping to answer, the methodology I'm going to try to use to get there, the types of things I'm going to analyze, and then I'm going to talk about the distribution of the survey and ask for your feedback. Um, so this is required. I do have to write this in order to graduate. Real, fingers crossed, everybody i uh, be pulling for me. But I'm also pursuing this particular topic because I think it is incredibly important. I think internet access issues and digital literacy are super key right now. And we've made so much progress, and yet we have so far to go. And as technology moves forward, it's just so important to get that last group of people online and skilled up um, before we just move even faster. And so I think this is while important, very under-researched. And so as I started writing this paper, I was really surprised to see how little data there is about public computer centers, how people use them, what they do for a community. And so you've, you've got a lot about the digital divide um, in all of its variety of forms, but not a lot about um, what it's actually doing for individuals or how they're trying to use these resources. Um, and so this is just the beginning. I want to try to start creating a more rigorous knowledge base that might be useful to policymakers or to providers for you or in other cities to know more about what's going on here and I make these centers work better for people who are trying to use them. And so the final product of this is a 30 to 50 page thesis that's due in May. I hope none of you have the misfortune of reading it in full, uh, but I will produce a shorter executive summary of findings. And I'm also going to make all of the data available, de-identified, to anyone who wants to use it. And so I can also help you parse that if you just want data for your center. If that's a robust enough, um, a enough number, then that's actually something that you can use, I hope. Okay, so I'm seeking to understand, and bear with me, how, why, in what way, to what end, and with what degree of success do Chicagoans use public computer centers? And so that's going to help me understand sort of the role that public computer centers are playing for individuals and then sort of extrapolate that onto the community. And I'm going to ask a lot about impacts and outcomes and how this is impacting people and how they think it's impacting their neighborhood. Um, and that's going to allow me to talk about public computer centers as a policy tool. And don't get me wrong, I think there's so much more than that. You know, I think they're, they're a gathering space, you know, they're a place of learning, they're incredible, and also <coughs> can be used as a policy tool to help reduce digital inequality, economic development, education, 
there are a number of different goals that we've got um, coming from funders, coming from providers. And so one of the things I'll be doing is sort of taking stock of all of the different things that public computer centers are supposed to be doing. And then comparing that to what users are, how they're using them, and see across the board, okay, so which goals are we fulfilling? To whatever extent I can from the data that I get. Um, and then I think some interesting secondary questions are sort of the interaction between digital and physical community building. I think you hear a lot of hype about, oh, social networking, et cetera, et cetera. If you're familiar with urban sociology, there's this big question of community lost and community found, and how is the internet affecting what we do with our neighborhoods, you know, if we're just ordering everything on Amazon and we're on Facebook instead of interacting in person. And I think public computer centers are like this microcosm of the, of the problem, like manifested before us. Not the problem, but like the puzzle, right? So people are going to a place to be together, but to connect with other people. And so one thing I'm asking about is who you're connecting with when you're online, and what's the social interaction like in the center? You know, are you helping people? Is there actual community building going on there? Um, and so I, I fully appreciate the irony of me presenting to you folks who uh, know this much better than I do. And so I will skim through this and it'll be covered in a lot more detail um, in my actual thesis. And so nationally, uh, we've come really far. 70%, according to Pew, of Americans have good quality broadband internet access at home. Um, that's up a lot, but that's lower for lower income brackets as expected. 64% um, for people making twenty to $30,000 and under. And so the main predictor of not having broadband, un not unexpectedly, is socioeconomic status. People can't afford it. Um, and a lot of efforts have been made, and I'll talk about that in a second, but we've still got ways to go. And even if you have access, I'll talk about this as well, uh, that's just the very first step as far as skills go. Um, and so we know that, okay, so people don't have internet at home, and they're definitely going to public computer centers to use it. I mean, the <coughs> libraries, from what I've heard, hit their peak capacity all the time. You know, they've got hundreds and hundreds of machines and frequently are hitting their peak capacity. And then the 2009 report that Davis did, I mean, it's, it's saying that, you know, wait times are really high. Like, what, as an average of two hours for a lot of libraries. And so, we know that the demand is there. Um, and so in Chicago, similar story. Uh, the oft-cited, the the, everywhere we see 40% of city residents. And so I'll break that down a little bit in my thesis. But um, it, it's possible that you don't have good quality internet for a huge proportion of Chicago. And there's also a huge diversity of skills. And so that's something, that's one of the problems with using the digital divide terminology, is that you're really missing how nuanced that can be, the many, the multiplicity of ways that people can use it. And so in Chicago, a quarter of Chicago knows how to make a website. A quarter of Chicago doesn't use the internet regularly at all. And so, you know, when we're talking about internet and how people use it, that's like a really big thing to condense. But I'll be mindful of that as we go forward. And so, oh yeah. Two-thirds of libraries reporting high wait times. Bless the libraries. Um, okay, but access really only matters in the context of skills. And so this is something I'll be breaking down in my literature review. We're talking about the skills gap. We're talking about what trainings are supposed to be successful. And debunking the myth that smartphones are solving the problem. Very convenient. I'm super glad that 90% of Americans have a mobile phone that 45% of low-income respondents use that phone to get on the internet. But what we're seeing is that um, just having a phone isn't enough to do a lot of things, both on the side where not all websites are mobile ready, it's hard to do word processing you know, on your phone, but also in that digital skills more generally really lag behind for people who don't have um, actual computer access and are just trying to use their phones. And I don't need to tell you this, but the implications are really big for not having internet access. And so from an economic perspective, from an educational perspective, all of the resources online, social, educational, civic, government resources, however you want to say it, um, it, like it, it's a big deal and it's only becoming more so. And so I'll talk about that a lot. And I'll also talk about that critically because you know there are you know downsides to that there are reasons that the government would want everyone to have internet you know i've had people say well well 
of course they want people to have internet, you know, then they can vote, you know, then they can sort of tell them what they're trying to hear. Um, what about privacy issues? And so I'll definitely be sure to talk about, okay, so is there like a darker side to that? Um, but I'll critically evaluate it across the board. But I can tell you that um, the, the consensus is by far that you, you really need internet and that's only getting more important. Uh, we're not going back on that. And so um, Karen Mossberger sort of looked at the geography of this, which is really interesting in that um, within low-income neighborhoods, technology disparities have the potential to exacerbate existing place-based inequalities across a variety of markets. And so when she looked at this, and you know, we can go back to the broadband statistic, we're in Chicago, so I don't have to explain to anyone that like, this, this is not surprising for broadband use by community area, where the red is between 35 and 54 percent, and the green is between 86 and 94 percent. So using it at home. And um, so this is mapping on pretty closely to the socioeconomic disparities that we see already. Okay, um, federal policy background. Um, interestingly enough, internet access began as like a, it was problematized in the 1990s when we first started talking about it. And so this is when the digital divide narrative comes out um, from the FCC and others. Since then, we've had a variety of federal policy actions on this. Uh, you know, E-rate to fund the libraries, BTOP and the Recovery Act, uh, the Everyone On and Connect to Compete initiative through the Free Public Lunch Program. And so a variety of federal level stuff, and some of that's trickled down, some of that's come directly. Um, and in Chicago, uh, talk a little bit about how we're thinking about that there, the development at least through documents of how the city began to think about uh, the digital divide, digital literacy, and so I get to talk about smart communities, I'll talk about Connect Chicago, uh, the tech plan, and one thing that I am having trouble with and I would love if people have suggestions for this is to also highlight the, store, the many stories of the distinct community organizations that are offering services because while some of them have received the federal funding that it's easy to tell the story for, it's hard to get a, a a narrative anywhere, a visible narrative of those places. And so what I think I'll probably do is highlight a number of them that I think are sort of representative from different types of centers, but if you've got a suggestion, I want to hear it. Um, there's some literature, but not a lot. There's a lot of literature on the link between access and um, access and like what it does for you. So, you know, students who've got it at home do better or people who are looking for a job and also have a computer at home do better, but sort of the equation that we're working with as far as, you know, literacy, access, and then outcomes is a little vague, right? So we don't have a ton of causal literature that's going across these things. And I'm not, I'm going to also be looking at a lot of correlational stuff, but at least I'm trying to include each part of that equation so that we can sort of understand it more broadly and how that's working. Um, all right. Yeah. Okay, so guys, I have developed a survey. I've developed an online instrument in English and Spanish. Um, it is the end all be all of my research. I've sat in public computer centers and watched people uh, use the internet to try to figure out how to design this and how it'll work. And um, I need your help in doing it. And so it takes 10 minutes. And I have received $300 from the public policy department at the University of Chicago <laughs> to give out three prizes because I know that a lot of these a lot of these places are timed. And so 10 minutes of your time, I really need it. And yes, it presumes that you know how to use a web browser and that you know how to enter a hyperlink. That's a huge problem, but I think it's worth it to try to get to a higher number of responses. And so any any help that you can in greasing the wheels as far as getting people from seeing this sign in your public computer lab, or also this sign, to this link. Uh, that, that's where I need you. Um, but so there'll be an incentive, it'll be a raffle, um, that data will be de-identified immediately, so kept separate from, you can opt in and just give me your email and your phone number so that I can contact you. Um, and then the rest of it is anonymous, but it will be linked to your center. Um, and I'm aiming for over 250 respondents. I would love to get more than that. The more I get, the more robust these findings can be, the more correlational 
uh, findings I can present and the more data that you'll have as centers to then take, you know, if, if you only get five responses, we, that, you know, that might not be representative. If you have 40 responses from your center, you know, that's huge. Then you can take this data and do your own analysis too, which would be awesome. Um, this is low tech, you guys. Uh, so I've printed out surveys. Um, later today, I'm going to be sending out an email to all of the providers that have an email listed on the city data portal in the Connect Chicago portal, asking them to participate in producing the survey. Um, put them up around the center, leave them up for a week, take them down. Yes, that's the plan. All right, and the content, there's sort of four main areas that I'm covering. Let me catch up here. So we're asking about activities, we're asking about impacts, we're asking about attitudes, and then we're going to ask a lot of demographic and geographic questions, not to know that in and of itself, but to overlay that on the other three categories to better understand patterns and how that might vary among groups of people. And so activities, you know, so what are you doing here? How often are you here? You know, what is your reason for coming here? How much do you rely on this center? Is this your primary source, or do you, do you prefer to come here? Um, is it, you know, is it the trainings? Who are you connecting to? Um, impacts. Some of this will be open for your response. Um, you know, tell me how you think this affects your community. Has this, you know, done anything for you in your life? Um, and also some things that I'm going to suggest because I think it's hard. You know, does this help you do your homework, or have you applied for jobs using this? Has the training taught you a skill that's helped you get a job? And so, on one hand, those are leading questions, but on the other hand, I think it's important that we start trying to make those things visible. Um, attitudinal, so attitudes toward the social effect of the internet. Uh, what's your like level of satisfaction? You know, with, with the trainings, with the center. Do you feel comfortable here? Um, you know, one of the Smart Chicago Collaborative's principles is you've got open and also everyone. And so I think one of the important things is to make sure people are feeling comfortable. And so to identify why people aren't. Also use sort of a crime lab technique, which is to ask not about you, but about your friends. So if you have friends who don't come to the center, you know, why not? You know, if they need these services. Is there something about it that turns them off? Just so we know. Um, just so we know. And then finally, demographics. So that's going to cover age, ethnicity, income, background, neighborhood, and also technology history and technology competency. And while there's a danger to having everything be self-reported, um, there's actually a good body of literature that says people are good assessors of their own technology competency. People report with a lot of accuracy how good they actually are at using computers. And so looking forward to hearing that. Okay. And so sort of three sets of data. So there's the qualitative data, there are the responses, the descriptions of, oh, you know, I like to come here to do this, and the trainings help me in this way because of X, um, I'm satisfied, or, you know, I don't feel comfortable, I'm having, you know, I like to come here because my friends are here, or because X person has helped me in this way. Um, to get a more precise, more granular picture of user activities, but then we'll also have quantitative data to sort of analyze those across groups. And so this is just a bunch of jargon for those interested, um, and that's sort of how I'll be identifying statistical significance, uh, because I do want to say, you know, like with some confidence, we can say that, you know, seniors are very happy with the trainings present, or that, you know, you are more likely to spend all of your time on Facebook if you are, you know, a youth under whatever age. Um, and so again, the validity and how much, how far I can go here, how much confidence I'll have, is dependent on the sample size. So more surveys the merrier. Um, and finally, I'm going to be doing some mapping. So I have the location of all the centers. I'm asking people where they're coming to the centers from, uh, and also where they live, and how they're identifying those neighborhoods. Uh, and so I'm really curious as to if there is a geography of access and choice and resources. And you know, so if the centers near the red line are getting a lot more traffic. You know, if you, even though you live somewhere else, you're more likely to go to a center downtown because it's open later. Um, I'm going to try to map the responses to the extent that it makes sense um, so that we can get a picture of that. And again, this is partially influenced by Karen Mossberger's work because she is finding a really strong geography of the trends that she finds in Chicago. Um, <coughs> 
talked about this. Okay, so this is your call to action. Um, I would love for you to distribute this information as widely as possible. I would love for you to consider participating. Um, and that just involves printing the signs or taking the ones I printed today, uh, putting them up in your center, directing people there. If they have low levels of digital literacy, just making sure that typing in that Viddy link doesn't trip them up. Um, and taking them down after a week. And then over the next two months, I'm going to analyze those responses. And I'll, again, produce that report for you. And you can call me and say, yeah, uh, I'll, I'm happy to come back here and I'll present the data. The other thing you can do is even easier, which is just forwarding other people you know my email. Um, I really appreciate the work that they've done to get emails up on the data portal. But again, it means so much more coming to you from you than coming from me. They don't know. You don't know if I'm some rando. I kind of am. But um, if you know centers who you think are interested in this or could participate, the greater diversity of places we have, the better. Um, and so I really appreciate you taking the time. I'm sorry if this was uh, the worst presentation you've ever seen in terms of content. Uh, I know we're all here to learn about the impacts, and that's also why I'm here. And so I really hope to come back in three months and present um, the answers. So thank you so much. I'm really looking forward to getting your questions and feedback. Right. Yes. So you don't want someone to fill out your survey from their mobile phone? They could. They could fill okay. out. Because I was thinking if they were in the center waiting to use a computer. That's a great idea. OK. They absolutely could. And I think it is mobile enabled. So that should work. Yeah. Yes. Mobile enabled. What is the platform? Woofoo. Woofoo. That yep. is mobile enabled. Yes. Woofoo is a wonder. Woofoo is great. Yeah. Um, when you do, are you going to do any kind of like um, classification of, say, the size of the center or the type of location? Definitely. Okay. And I haven't narrowed that down yet because I'm waiting to see what sorts of responses I get. Okay. But size will be a big thing, and then the type of center. So, you know, workforce centers have different goals than senior centers do. And so I'm not going to generalize across like success of this center and achieving user goals. Um, I'll break it down as much as possible. And the more responses I get, the more I can break it down. How are you going to be able to decide what the success factors are for the library, for example? Right. So because I'm. Such a di diverse. You have such a diversity. And so I'm just going with the mission. Um, I, you know, I'm going with providing free and open access. And um, to whatever end. To whatever end, yeah. And so I'm not going to define success for anyone. I'm just going to look at the the different, uh, you know, things. You know, what BTOP says, what the city of Chicago says when they want digital excellence. Um, you know, what Smart Chicago wants. And so uh, we'll see. It's not going to be like the center is a success or a failure based on this. But you know, is it meeting the goals based on what users are reporting? And how do the user goals differ from what you know the library's goals are? which for the library, you probably is not going to in a lot of ways because it's so broad. But yeah, there's a huge challenge there. Other thoughts? Scathing criticisms, suggestions? Yeah. Um, did you think about doing on, on-site interviews in terms of like if you, if you weren't to a certain threshold with your sample size by a certain date? Go in and try and find audiences of yes, yeah, I'll probably do that. And that would be a good way to um, complement it anyway, I think. Yeah. And especially in the future, if I ever extend this into a longer paper, I'll do a lot more of that. But focusing on the survey now to make sure it gets done, because I think that's going to be a better, um, better tool in this case. Yeah. All right. Cool. And so I hope. Well, wait. Yeah. So. Um, how, okay, so the peop, a lot of the people here are workers in the computer labs. Mm -hmm. Do you have a specific outreach for them, like materials or yes. flyers? Or I do. I actually wasn't queuing that up like a softball in a while. Yes, that. I have <laughs> flyers in English and Spanish um, and the survey with the corresponding survey link. I would love for you to take these today. I would love for you to provide me with your um, correct email, just in case it's different on the site. And then I'm going to send all this information to you. I would love for you to forward it to others you know. I would love for you to put these up in your centers. Um, and also, you feel free to contact me if you read the survey and you think, 
oh, um, you know, like, I wonder if she's thinking about this, or I just want to provide our center's story, um, and then I can get a better sense of what that means. So, yes, so please take these. Please give me your email address, um, and then I'll send them to you virtually so that you can print more and send them to your friends. Yeah. Okay. I really appreciate your time, so thank you so much. Yeah. Would, would it make sense for you to show us the survey now? Yeah, if you want. Yeah, let's, let's yeah, let's yes. Um, can we do English yeah. for my All own? right. Woofoo. Is there a track? Oh, yeah. How many people, what should you have a goal and how many people you want to have take it? Um, at least 250, but hopefully many more. <laughs> What's a minimum for center or don't you care? Um, I don't care if if I could if I could dictate if I could have my dream world every center would have forty respondents. Forty. Okay. Yeah, that would be really robust. I could do just about all of the analysis I want to do then. That'd but twelve hundred people. That'd be twelve hundred people. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So twelve hundred people. All right. Well, yeah. Well, you know, we're, I'm trying to be in this. Dream big. Okay, dreaming big. Hello and welcome. So you you go into your center. You see this, maybe a smiling face says, hey, you should consider giving us some feedback. Um, 13 or older, I don't think I mentioned that. Um, that's just like a methodology thing as far as we don't want kids misunderstanding any of the questions. And then it's all one page. There is a second page, but it's just for putting in your information for the raffle. Okay. And so what type of center are you in? Not sure. Other? That's fine. Um, I will know based on sort of like other factors, if not. Um, how frequently do you use the center? How long does it take you to get here? Um, what's the address of the place? And so, you know, that's, I might actually make that not required. But that's going to allow me to map it, which I think will be really interesting. Um, do you usually come alone or with friends? And then why? You know, is that a social thing? Um, like I said, are there barriers that prevent your friends who need to use the computers from coming? You know, maybe they don't feel comfortable. You know, maybe I, um, like, as a woman, like, don't want to use the labs in Harold Washington because there's a lot of people watching adult videos there. You know, we need to know that. Um, so how much do you rely on this lab? So completely, mostly, partly. And this, this stat could be awesome, right? Like, if we have, like, all of these people are relying primarily on that, you know, I hope then you could... Show that to whoever's funding you and say, look, we're doing a thing that really needs to be done. So this will sort of help throw into context the rest of the information. Um, so how else do you access computers and the internet? Really curious as to to what degree this is something supplemental and to what degree it's totally primary. Um, and in terms of your computer and internet skills, and uh, how did you get these? I think like how you came to where you are is important. Um, Okay, so I know this is open-ended, but I think that's the best way to not guide them or lead them or, you know, exclude responses. And then we've got a bunch of activities, all right? So learning, social networking, is it health information, are you doing business, are you accessing government services, are you online dating? I put it on there. I would like to know. Um, and then what else? Okay. So... Yeah, so these are, this is a variety of things. I, I know this is, this is the best way I figured out how to do it. So check all that apply. That would be excellent. Uh, maybe it's all of those things. Um, right, okay, so descriptions. Just open-ended descriptions, you know, has this done anything for you? And so, I, you know, I'm not expecting a, a long story for everyone, but I, if there are, like, really important stories, I think those are cool to find. And I think that's important to show and make visible. Um, okay, so in-person interactions. So mm -hmm. what, while you're doing there, do you get help from staff? Do you get help from other users? Um, do you, have you been made to feel bad about your technology skills? Um, this, is a, this is a question that Pew asks in their national survey. And so I'm curious to compare it. 
what do you think about the internet overall? How does it affect uh, society broadly? And so if everybody who is at the computer labs you know, thinks that it weakens social ties, you know, that, that's interesting. You know, were, were they left behind or are they, are they just still skeptical? Okay, and so trainings, satisfaction with trainings, additional resources. Um, I know that it's going to be uh, silly of me to write a paper and then say, here are the things that you should add when, you know, I'm not coming from a place where I understand your funding constraints um, for at least the individual centers or, um, or you know, like what, what you have been trying to do. I can't tell all of those stories, but hopefully it'll be useful information to you anyway, just so you know. Um, question? Um, I was curious, in any of your, your research, um, or as you came up with um, your, your framework for, mm -hmm. for analysis, um, how actual literacy issues underlie mm -hmm. digital literacy questions, and um, I guess what the research says, and then kind of what, maybe if you just wanted to touch on it at any point, it would be kind of difficult to assess with just your, your, your um, piece of scope and things like that. That's a great question. So I think one problem is scope, and one, one this constraint of the methodology is that I need people to be able to read the survey. And so you're right, I am going to be missing people who have trouble with literacy generally. Um, that's also a problem for accessibility. Um, you know, this survey can't be read out loud um, in any WUFU enabled feature. Yeah. A couple oh. things on that. I'm sorry. So you can have a screen reader, and a lot of, a lot of computers do have screen readers. Right. And is it allowable to have a proctor? I mean, I mean, it, it, it's very common in a lot of these centers. That would be great. Okay, yeah. so that's acceptable. That's okay. Yeah, as long as that person, and you know, I, I haven't put guidelines in. I don't think it makes sense to like add another couple paragraphs about proctors. But as far as I'm concerned, um, as long as that person isn't influencing the responses, that would be great. But you're right. Yeah, that's that's a that's a limitation of this research. I'll be able to talk a little about, and in my literature review, I discuss um, education. Um, and how that maps, and so that's a big factor, and people will answer sort of an education question at the end here about, you know, did you finish high school? And so, but that doesn't necessarily map to literacy, though, you're right. If you have any suggestions, I would love to hear them. Yeah. Um, okay, how would you rate the effects? And so that's a general question, but now that I already know, now that I already know why they're coming, I think that'll, um, I'll be able to illuminate that a little more. Explain, what effects do you think public computer labs have in your neighborhood? Again, this is open-ended, but I, I do think we'll see trends emerge, and I can use different qualitative softwares to figure out. Do you feel welcome and comfortable here? i um, curious to know. Uh, what is this computer lab doing well? How could this computer lab improve? Um, that's not to pick on uh, any specific centers. It's just to identify things overall. Like, if people are really constrained by the time limits, you know, that will come up here. If people are really having a hard time getting to the center in the hours that are there, that'll come up here. Um, and also, if the trainings are great, you know, if, if the people there are really helping them, that, that'll come up here. Um, and then these are demographics, um, which is pretty basic and includes, and we already did technology history. And so that's just to see are there patterns there. Um, and obviously those will be put in the context of whatever neighborhood they're in. Um, Sonia, who's watching uh, and does a lot of our WUFU form sheet, said that um, limiting the number of drop downs is important, especially for screen readers, because the screen readers just can't read it. Okay. So whenever it's possible not to have a drop down menu, it's preferable. I think I actually don't have any. Um, right. Yep, I don't have any drop downs. Well, there you go. Yep. Well played. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then same thing in Spanish. So. Have you had people take this that would be in the kind of people that you're expecting? That you want to take it, so you could see if there if some of the questions are could be rewarded or something. Yeah, I, I've had a, a couple different <coughs> folks take it. I haven't done any formal sort of user yeah. test, but um, I, I didn't see any. I've I've made 
a couple iterations of the survey. Yeah. Yeah. So that's fine. Um, I don't know if you're planning out the students more on the science days, but the American Library Association is a conference that works on the production of the Oh, wow. Yeah, that's that's cool. I feel like that's like way out of my league. But um, yeah, if, if this produces um, stuff that is in fact rigorous and useful, I would I would love to do that. Yeah. And if anyone knows of data sets that are relevant, I thought I did a pretty good search, but and I didn't find anything that spoke to this. But if you know of them, let me know. Um, if you have internal data that's not open that you would be willing to share with me for a paper that will be published publicly. Let me know. Or if you just want to share it privately and I can look at it and then just be informed by it generally, that's cool too. Looking at you, Chicago Public Libraries. <laughs> so. All right. Again, um, available by email, available by phone. Give me a call. Let me know your thoughts. Put these posters up in your centers just that one week. Um, and then, yeah, I hope, I hope to make visible um, the impact of what you're doing. And I really appreciate it. So. Thank you so much. Right, thank you.